This is Hakonicloa macra aureola, variegated Japanese forest grass. And um, that's a mouthful, but it's a beautiful little plant. It, uh, it's unlike most grasses that we see in that the, um, the leaves are flat as, as opposed to more cylindrical. So what I really like about it is it has this appearance, uh, the, the bright chartreuse color is wonderful, but the leaves, I, I like the texture, they actually divide. They come out of a single stem, but then they divide into two or three sub-leaflets. I guess you would say, and um, and also have that nice flat blade, um, as especially as they get older. What you're looking at right here is the grass in uh, mid-April, and it's come out of its dormancy. This is a deciduous grass, so and uh, just showing it here next to Laura Petalum Plum Delight. The two uh, colors are both so bright. I thought they looked kind of neat next to one another. Um, so. These come out of dormancy as soon as you get some warm weather um, and in our area in the San Francisco Bay Area that was, this year was in April and um, this one's already got some size to it. Uh, they go dormant uh, as soon as there's a good frost and um, and they're quite easy to maintain. Essentially you just cut them to the ground and when it's warm again they'll come back out of it. Do you see the uh, yellowy leaf with the uh, green ribbing coming down the middle and uh, it's primarily the chartreuse uh, yellowy leaf. Uh, this is the my favorite variety of the Japanese forest grass that I've seen and um, uh, so this clump right here is probably about 24 to 30 inches in diameter and it's about seven or eight years old um, and these do spread a little by uh, underground runners but they're not um, invasive the way some running type plants can be so they're very controlled and uh, you don't have to worry about the invasive uh, thing with these um, so for me, they look their best in um, in part shade or morning light, so that uh, they're protected from the hottest part of the sun uh, or the day in the summer. Um, we live in a valley where it gets um, into the 90s and the hundreds Fahrenheit, and also there's very low humidity. And the combination of the two uh, is a little bit too much if you put this in full sun. I've seen people try and they usually burn. So um, I would recommend in hotter areas to put this in um, a little shade from the hottest part of the day. They can certainly take light. I would just avoid the hottest part of the day. And that also segues to the point that this is not a drought tolerant type of plant. Um, they do like some regular moisture and so um, I would count on giving them that. If you're near the coast where it's cooler um, you can get away with less moisture and you can also uh, put these in full sun. I've seen these used around deer and they were left alone. I'm not a hundred percent on that but I think they're a pretty good bet in deer areas as being deer tolerant. And I like them also used as single plants. Um, I'm not a designer who likes onesies and twosies, but because of the size of this and the bright color, I don't think you want to go too crazy with it. And I've seen people try and use a lot of it, and I didn't care for the look. So as a designer, I think this is a great accent, and then be creative about what you play it off of. Um, here you see some very small lavender quasti next to it, and the chartreuse by the purple is pretty. Um, we've got vinca minor around it, the nice dark green uh, sets off the chartreuse and then the Laura Petalum Plum Delight that you saw a minute ago um, is a very nice play on color as well. So that is Japanese forest grass, Hekanakloa macra areola, and variegated Japanese forest grass. Very nice little grass um, and good accent uh, if you don't mind deciduous grasses.